Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I show you how to make a lifestyle photography in the sunset. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Romali, I'm a French photographer living in the amazing, the incroyable city of Paris in France. And I have the honor and the privilege of making two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get all the raw files of all my past episodes and click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I showed you how to make a panorama in difficult light. The idea is that the sun was on the left and uh, there was a different exposure on the right and I did bracketing and then I merged everything. It's a pretty cool trick. It was the first time I did it this way. Check it out. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I made this portrait of uh, this beautiful model by the beach. It's not very easy because it was a, like a low light situation and I wanted to do it with no flash. So let me show you how I did it. All right, so before we get started, I just want to announce that I'm launching my first photographic challenge. And to be able to participate to that challenge, you have to go to photosearch.com. You go on my tutorials and here on the right, you will see a competition. Now, before you can enter your competition, you're going to have to have created an account. Uh, it's totally free on my website by clicking here. And once you, you have created an account, you can go to my photos and you can upload some photos. So, for example, uh, you just you have to give a name to the photo, like I'm going to call it the horse son. You have to put in the description, otherwise it's not going to work. So I'm going to put it horse again and you can browse. And for example, I'm going to take that photo of the horse and upload it. Once you've uploaded photos uh, to your account, uh, you can use them uh, for competition. So you can go into enter now and uh, you see some people already entered some competitions there and uh, you will be able to choose your photo and make it there. And then people are going to vote on it on Facebook and the one that gets the most like will win. And the four, uh, like the top five that's going to win the top 10, depending, I will see. Uh, I will do a special critique to, you know, to say what I like, what I don't like about it. And, uh, you know, give you some tips of composition. I'm going to use that to sort of uh, help teach light and, uh, you know, uh, composition. So this week uh, is sunset landscape in the wild. So if you have got some nice sunscape landscape in the well. Now, what you win with this competition is a, a course of your choice, uh, which is, uh, I believe this word is this week is a landscape retention course. Uh, so it's not exactly of your choice, but if you already have it, we'll find another one that you don't have. And also uh, the ability, I will actually uh, talk about your website, show your photos, show who you are as a photographer. My videos have been seen between you know, 20 to 50,000 people. So it's gonna give you exposure also. So you gain exposure and some free tutorials. And you know, and it's the fact of playing. So voila, this is my first uh, um, challenge, sunset landscape in the wild. There is already some very nice entry there. And the one who gets the most likes is the one who wins. Okay, now this week's tutorial is about lifestyle photography. It's a funny story. I was on a beach at Clearwater Beach in Florida. It's one of the nicest beach close to Tampa. I really like to go there. And uh, I wanted to, actually I was gonna shoot, uh, you know, anything uh, from the pier to uh, a house. And there was this beautiful girl being taken in photos with her son by her mother. And she looked like to be a professional model. So I went to speak with her mother and it happens that she was a professional model and the sun was coming down and I said, do you mind that I try some lifestyle photography on you? I didn't have any flash, but I had, uh, so I had the Sony A7R and there's one lens that I love doing a portrait with is the 100 millimeter macro Canon lens, which I put on my Sony. So I was, it's a, it's a macro lens, but it's really good for, for portraits. Now, in case you don't know this, but when you do portraits, it's um, uh, bigger is your lens and uh, more pleasing is going to be usually the, the person's body, like it's going to look thinner and nicer. Like for example, 50 millimeter or 30 millimeter is really bad for a close up because it, it makes the face kind of weird. I mean, if it's an effect you're going for, it's fine. But if you want to make people thinner and more nicer, 100 and above or 80 and above is, is better. Uh, I like to shoot at 100 people. Some people, you know, rather shoot at 200 with a 70 to 200. It really depends. The trick here was to get something that was uh, not only a nice portrait, but I was also, also 
had a nice environment feel to it, like a lifestyle, you know, she was just playing around with her, her kids by the sun. So the problem that I had is that I was using the Sony with an adapter with the camera lens, and when you do that, the, the focus is very slow. So I went onto manual focus, and I was using what we call the picking. Uh, on Sony cameras now, you have a picking indicator, which is really cool, where everything that is red means it's in focus. And so I'll, give, I'll show you just the best ones because uh, some of them are, were very blurry. I really had a hard time. I did not expect to do this shot, but I kind of liked the end result. So I wanted to, to give you some little tricks. Now, as usual, if you want to go for a very, very sunset type of look, you got to expose for the highlights, meaning you, you don't want your sun to be too much burn. So let's look at some of these photos. I started off, so I was at ISO 100, of course, uh, 7.1 at first, 1 250th of a second. Now, when you shoot with a 100 millimeter, the rule is usually you want to be at 1 one uh, hundred of a second or above because longer is your lens, more chance it's going to be blurry. Now, this, this was too much. This is really exposing for the lights, but too much. It was too dark. Of course, you know, we have the power of opening up the shadows in Lightroom. This is the RAW file on retouch. But you know we have too much too much choice. It's too under, uh, it's too much underexposed. So then I went completely the opposite. I went to 100 of a second, and ISO 400. So like five f stop more. And now we are getting a proper exposure. But I, I was afraid that I was burning too much the sun. I really wanted her and the sun. So then I went back to one 500 of a second at f 0.5. I tried different settings. This was too dark. And finally, I found this and I, th I thought that was going to be cool. You know, and I think this is a good uh, sweet spot. This was what? 1 250th of a second. But you see, I went instead of a 7.1, I went at 5 and I boosted a bit the ISO 320. I really wanted to make sure uh, that she was in focus and that we could still have the highlights. And that's the on retouch wall file. Uh, I'll show you a couple. So you can see here, uh, she's in the dark, but if I open up the shadows, you know, we can see she's pretty sharp. There is a bit of noise, but it, it's a usable shot. Not the best shot in the world, but again, you know, you're in these conditions, you can only get really professional photos if you have like big flashes so that, you know, you really get all the details of the face, but you will see that the results are pretty decent. So uh, I'm going to show you two photos I'm going to retouch. I'm going to retouch this one because I love the fitting of it. So let's go ahead and retouch it. Uh, so I'm going to put up the shadows and bring on the highlights. Now you would have never guessed that ever, did you? And uh, now the problem you can see is that the kid was right, she had such a cute girl, right into the sun there is a bit of uh, chromatic aberration, like a little red thing. That's something that happens a lot uh, if you're like straight into the sun. So it's gonna be very important to, uh, to do something about that. But first let's do the whites and blacks. So um, I'm gonna do the alt, but this, this time actually I'm gonna do, you know, visually. I don't want a very contrasty photo, so I'm not going to push the blacks too much and the whites, something like this, okay? And I may be going to boost a little bit the overall exposure. I want it to be very, uh, I don't know, very light, very colorful. But now the problem that we have is um, uh, the top of the photo is too dark. So uh, first, let's, I'm going to go to, uh, I think I, I went for daylight in the... Um, yeah, in the white balance and added a little bit of magenta. This is my me crazy bit about magenta, maybe like just plus 20, just a little bit of magenta because you know, I never go anywhere without adding this bit of magenta. I know people, some people hate me for it, but that's, I do photos that I like to do. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a graded filter. So I'm gonna just lower a little bit the exposure for, for the sky here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of form. I really want to make this a, a lot warmer. Okay, and then one thing you can do so that the kid is not too dark is you can open her beautiful daughter. I'm just going to open up the shadow. It's going to make her daughter a bit less, uh, uh, you know, dark here. So maybe not that warm, I mean, not that dark, but just a little bit. Something like this. I kind of like that. Let's see, before after. That's kind of cool. Maybe I'm going to see if I can make a second one with new to see if I can close the photo just to make the top of the photo a bit darker. 
you know, it's always good to make two gradients. It makes things more interesting. Okay, that's a bit too much. I'm going to lower this. Okay, now we've got an interesting sky. Now we have to take care of several things, and that's where it's really important to go into the uh, uh, first the lens correction. So let's zoom on her. See how we got this big red fringe around her. Now, if I enable the profile correction, hopefully this is going to be less strong. Okay, it is still very strong before, after. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's not so good. So maybe we can go into the color and click on remove chromatic aberration here. Okay, again. And then, um, all right, let's go for the purple U. I'm going to move this around here because the colors that we are want to remove is really here. And let's use amounts. Yeah, you see how it took it out? Now it's way too much, so I have to do that. But now it's much more natural. See, before the lens correction, you got really a red fringe. And after the lens correction, we don't have it anymore. So that's cool. So while we are at it and we are at 100% sharpening, uh, let's take care of the noise. You can see it's a bit noisy there. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to do a 70-30 on this one. I'm going to, I'm going to do like 30 taking out all the noise in the photo. Okay, that's perfect. And then I'm going to bring 70 of sharpening because I do 100. Now that's going to bring some noise back in, maybe a little bit more, uh, maybe like 63. And then I'm going to do the famous masking, holding the Alt key and making sure that anything which is basically dark doesn't get sharpened. Okay, you know what? On this one, exceptionally, I'm going to go a bit lower on the sharpen. Now I want you know, I think on babies and pretty girls, it's important to not be, um, you know, to not have a too, uh, too sharp of a photo. Okay, and then, um, all right. Okay, I don't know what it's doing, but now I want to take care of the, um, I want to take care, uh, oh yeah, of the upright function. The upright function is going to make the horizon straight. So where is my little upright function? I think it is here in basic. I'm going to click upright auto and look at the horizontal line. It's going to make the more photo. Yeah, straight. So that's kind of cool. Okay. And I think I will maybe warm up a little bit your whole photo so that we don't have so much blue in the, in the foreground. And I kind of like that. I'm kind of happy with that result. You can play around also with camera calibration for and going for portraits. Uh, uh, that's pretty good. Or landscape. Uh, sometimes that gives you just, a, it's a different way of interpreting the, 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 the raw file. And uh, the portrait, the, what the portrait does is um, makes a, yeah, a different type of red. I think it's, uh, this one is pretty cool. So check it out. And you know, I love her, the expression on her face and, uh, and with the, her, with her kin, which is, uh, having fun, plus we have this amazing sunset. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the photo. That, that was really the feeling I had when I, when I shot it. And because I shot this in, in the same light condition, I can just simply select all, click on sync, uh, and make sure that check all is on, and I'm gonna synchronize everything. So now I've got this one, which is already retouched, and this one, and what about this one? This one, yeah, not so bad, a bit too strong, uh, so uh, I think there was another one that I really liked. Okay, and one thing you can do also is just press Command Shift C. Command Shift T is like a copy and copy everything. And I'm going to take this one, which I really liked, and Command V. Okay, this is pretty good. I just have to re redo the upright. Okay, off and auto. All right. Okay, yeah, this one the horizon was too, but it's kind of fine. I kind of like the fitting on this one, so I don't have to redo the whole retouching, you know. Maybe uh, this is being a bit too low compared to where they are, so maybe I'm going to put this a bit higher up or maybe even erase it. Yeah, so we have something which is more uh, nicer. But you, you can see without flash and without everything, I, I got some really decent photos, uh, you know, with a 100 millimeter. And the only important thing is really being like the lowest ISO possible. I mean, it's a trick, you know, not too much ISO. You got to be sharp and you got to be underexposed so that you still get this lovely landscape feeling. Okay, 
hope you got your, you like this guys and um, and I hope you're gonna do this challenge with the landscape and I'll see you in another episode. Okay, back to me. All right guys, I hope you like this tutorial and if you have any ideas or suggestions of things you would like me to do, well, just leave me a comment under the video. Thank you so much for being there and I'll see you in another episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir. Wow, 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 wow.